purchased this L'Oreal Revitalift Hyaluronic Acid Plus Caffeine Eye Serum. I have talked about this in a lot of my Shop With Me videos, but I decided to buy it. Um, caffeine applied under the under eyes, depending on the type of hyperpigmentation you have, it may offer a very temporary brightening effect, and it also can help like decrease puffiness temporarily. And hyaluronic acid is hydrating. Honestly, I purchased it because I've been really intrigued by the applicator. <laughs> it's like these rolling balls. And roll it underneath and then like over your eyes. So you get the cooling rollerball action and it deposits the serum. But, so I've used this a couple of times. Word of warning, if it's very thin in consistency and if it drips into your eye, it burns <laughs> for sure. So I think it would be better if it were just a little bit more viscous in consistency, but I do kind of notice a temporary like depuffing under the eyes with this. But I have also tried the Ordinary Makes or Made, Does it, do they still have it as a caffeine eye cream? That was pretty good. You don't need an eye cream, I've said this a bazillion times, but caffeine under the eyes can offer a temporary brightening effect. So I went ahead and put on my Hydra Boost. Um, I got a question I saw in the comments of today's vlog. Somebody was asking me, how long do I use something in terms of trying it out? And I use products up, unless they are something I just do not like. I pretty much use products up in their entirety. Um, before I review them, I usually give them, I mean, it depends on the type of product, but I usually use it for four weeks, four to six weeks, depending on the type of product. Sometimes less if it's something like a sunscreen where you put it through some wear tests and you know, you're not expecting it to change your skin or you know, offer anything, then it's much less time. But yeah, I think this person was asking this question because they were asking about like breakouts and stuff. Honestly, for me personally, skincare products don't trigger breakouts. And when people say breakouts, that's kind of a loaded term. Do they mean acne flares or do they mean like irritation and rashes? If you develop um, a rash to a product, like a irritation or something, it should be pretty obvious within um, a couple of days of using it and it's not always directly where you put the product either like the skin around the eyes can be more susceptible the skin on the neck can be more susceptible anyways but if it's acne um it would be unusual to put a product on and expect your acne to flare like the next day because acne is down under the surface of the skin it kind of has to manifest itself it's always a good idea to patch test a new product put a little bit like on your neck or somewhere just a little spot like behind the ear see if you tolerate it or whatever but honestly that has its limitations because it's not really going to tell you if the product is going to trigger your acne necessarily um but it could just kind of give you a feel like if there's something in it that you might already be sensitized to some people can have overly sensitive skin from using too many products and their skin is hyper irritable they may have symptoms of burning, stinging, or they may just have a lot of redness and be more breakout prone as a result of using too many products. Let's go ahead and put on the sunscreen. Still loving this SkinCeuticals Physical Fusion UV Defense. Um, I don't know why I've been sleeping on this product, although I will say it is a very thin consistency, so do your diligence with making sure you get good coverage. <sighs> Oh, another question that I saw in today's video. So I wear UPF clothing a fair amount. And somebody was asking about my Mott 50 bathing suit, the UPF bathing suit with the long sleeves. They were saying, do you need to wear sunscreen under that? Technically you don't. And um, because it offers, like it, it should block 98% of UV rays, which is 
best case scenario with sunscreen and I mean putting sunscreen on underneath that I don't really think is going to add much if anything it's just going to ruin the bathing suit material you know leave stains and whatnot but definitely put sunscreen on all the sun exposed areas like your arm um, hands legs whatever is sun exposed and then reapply when you get out of the water so that eye serum does kind of give a bit of a tingly sensation, a little bit of warmth. Last night I did a load of whites, which I always procrastinate. I don't know what it is about whites. I always procrastinate. And I love when I have a freshly laundered load of whites because I like the smell of bleach. <laughs> I know, it's weird. Yeah, I love the smell of... <laughs> of freshly laundered whites like the bleach smell on the fabric but I'm wearing the these are the denim shorts I'm always raving about from Amazon I've had for like over a year but this is a white pair freshly laundered and this tank is also from the Amazonian they come in a three pack um, you can get a few different colorways like they have a blue green and white pack I think that I got and they also have like a black gray and black they have a few or poly i think is a brand they're actually really comfortable it's like that modal fabric they're pretty comfortable and they hold up well i've purchased multiple well, hey guys i just finished filming a costco shop with me video and i am in the car i'm listening to a book called made in the usa on audible it is very sensitive subject matter so much so that i can't even tell you what it is because youtube will flag the video if i even mention it but uh, I'll link it down below. You can read the description on Amazon. Very intense topic. Highly suggest listening to it if you especially are in the healthcare field in any way, shape, or form. Because it's definitely something that we need to be educated on for sure. Although it is not for the faint of heart to listen to. It's, but I will say the reader is doing an excellent job like she's doing different voices for the different people in the book and the stories it's quite good um so yeah anyways while i was in costco samples are back i haven't been in costco in a long time while i was in there i had a sample of this chocolate dipped banana frozen banana so good made me want to make an ice cream um, but I don't have any bananas, and I didn't have the sample until I was about ready to leave, and I didn't want to wait in line just to buy bananas. It was kind of crowded in there. It was getting crowded. Speaking of which. All right, I just pulled into the parking lot. I'm going to go into Home Goods, but I'm in that shopping plaza that I often come to. And those of you who've been following me for a while, uh, disappoint the Joann's that always kind of smells a little funky is going out of business, which I never really shopped in the sense of buying anything there, but I always found it pleasant to wander through, especially come close to fall when I put all the fall decor out. Joanne's always had a good lineup, so that's a bummer. But I may have to dive in there, dive in there, dip in there, because I see they're having 20 to, who's wanting to bother me? 20 to 40% off. What I need in there, nothing, but um, I'm tempted to go on in. You can always buy stickers, right? <laughs> All right, I'm here in Johansson. and I guess they're not going out of business. They're just relocating. These mugs are 50% off. They're really sweet. This would make a good teacher gift. Paper plates. I don't know about you guys, but I never ate off of paper plates my entire life other than like birthday parties or picnics but i see a lot of people eat off of paper plates like all uh, the time this doesn't that get expensive no, um like does right. it, it seems like that well, gets we, really we on, it seems like that would get really expensive to eat off of paper yeah, plates 
all the time. Let me know in the comments. Do you eat off of paper plates? I like never would, but I've always had a dishwasher too. I will say that. Aren't these cute? Little birdhouses. 50% off, that's a good deal. Joanne's stuff is cute, but it's always like really expensive, in my opinion. The home decor. And they've got some Christmas candles, majorly discounted. Ooey gooey craft kit. Oh, gross. Flush and frenzy. That is disgusting. I'm here in Home Goods and this fresh mango candle I might have to have. It smells delicious. shower finish my skincare routine update i've been trying this out for about a week now right wasn't it last weekend i did a first impression this is the omega water cream from the inky list so the consistency of this is pretty emollient and in my experience using it it doesn't layer underneath sunscreen particularly well the sunscreens that i've tried over it which have been several tend to pill up so i don't you know, if you're somebody who likes to use a moisturizer in the morning in addition to your sunscreen, you may run into issues with this. It's a little shiny and y'all know I like to put on moisturizer. I, I encourage you to put moisturizer on to the skin while it's still a little bit damp. Because this is, I guess, so emollient, when you have a little bit of moisture on your skin, I find that this gets clumpy. So long story short, it's not bad. But I would say there's just better moisturizers out there for me that I like better because of their consistency, the way they lay on the skin. And this, um, what was the other thing I was gonna tell you guys about it? It's good within six months of opening, whereas the Hydra Boost Body Gel Cream that I have here, good within 12 months of opening. Now this product, um, is meant for the body, but I use it on my face and it works really, really well. And it's not like greasy or anything in my experience using it. Um, you may find it greasy if you have oilier skin because it um, is a little thicker, but all that to say, I rate this a three and a half out of five. It's not bad. It's just not like something that I would go out of my way to purchase. That was gifted to me, by the way, from the Inky List. But let me know if you guys have tried that before. I um, love their oat cleansing balm. They have some really good products, but um, I find it interesting, both the Ordinary and the Inky List, they're kind of sparse in terms of the actual offering of moisturizers. They have like a lot of serums and whatnot, but they don't have very many moisturizers. Like the Ordinary has the Natural Moisturizing Factor plus HA, which I really like, but they don't have too many other options. Oh man, you guys. Today was one of those days that just flew by as usual. What was I looking for? Oh, my tread no one. Where did it go? Y'all, I have a chaos down here. Uh, so this is my, I have a, I get my prescription filled. I have them dispense two, uh, three 20 gram tubes. So 60 grams in total. I just like the little tubes personally. I find that with prescription topicals, the metal packaging of the tube, I find that if it's a big tube, it, I find if it's a big tube, sometimes you get these like little cracks on the edges. So I like the little tubes personally, but yeah, this one, I still have quite a bit left. Now the, the consistency of the cream, it spreads on the skin really well, but it looks like I have a lot when I put it on, but I promise it's just a little pea size but it's almost a bit of a whipped consistency. But if you ever use the gel, it is a little bit more tough, not tough, but a little bit, it's, it's a, a little less forgiving in terms of its spread. You can still get a good thin layer with, with, the, um, with the gel. But see, the tretinoin cream, see a lot of patients, they don't like the vehicle they find it's too greasy or whatever but for me personally and using it i love it it's funny because i always get questions about the inactive ingredients in tretinoin like there's some these that are falling out of favor thank goodness those pore clogging websites where they like rank different ingredients and claim that they're pore clogging which 
you know, some of that is just based on these really antiquated rabbit ear model studies. But I was always getting questions like about avoiding isopropyl myristate. And it's like, dude, that's just in tretinoin. <laughs> and nobody is, you know, having poor clogging. It's an acne treatment. So yeah, all that to say, these websites and things that rank ingredients as far as comedogenicity boils down to the product overall and then the individual. It's really hard, you know, I always do get questions like, what's a good product that's not going to break me out? And it's like, dude, there's no predictor on that. There's really not. Like, especially, you know, a lot of marketing will be like for oily skin, for breakout prone skin, and there's certain ingredients that are favorable for those skin types in terms of absorbing excess oil off the surface of the skin or feeling lightweight. But there's nothing really about a formulation that predicts like whether or not it's gonna aggravate someone's acne or not. It's just an individual kind of thing. So long story short, if you have sensitive breakout, like skin that's prone to acne flares with new products and stuff, don't, don't necessarily dismiss a product that is not marketed, like oily, acne prone, if it doesn't have that language in it, because it, it, it is more complicated than that. Oh. So that being said, the Omega water cream, you may love if you have oily, acne, breakout prone skin. In my opinion, it's a little shiny, um, so you may not like that, but you may love it. It's like, I, I, I really have no way of knowing that. Um, but speaking of shiny, I wanted to update you guys. I have been slugging my arms and legs. I didn't do it tonight because I used the Hydro Boost Body Gel Cream, but I've been slugging my arms and legs and I've really seen a difference. Just like, I feel like it's taken 10 years off of the appearance of my legs. Um, it just makes them look a lot younger doing this. But yeah, slugging your arms and legs. If you, you know, shorts, it's always short season here, but if you like wearing shorts, skirts, and things like that, and you want to just re rejuvenate the look of the skin on your legs, try doing the slugging. So what I do is when I get out of the shower, I pat the skin a little bit, so there's still a little bit of water on the skin, and then I put the Vaseline. I was using CeraVe healing ointment, but I finished that. And I also was using Cetaphil healing ointment, but I finished that. Anyways, I put it all the way on my arms, take it up to like, right here on my shoulder. I mean, you could do your entire body if you wanted to, but anyways, I do my arms, I also do my hands, and then my legs, but a lot on my thighs. And then I have this old Carol Hockman robe that I got from Costco, and I put that on over it so that when I sit down, I don't get like petrolatum and stuff all over the place, that's a pain. So the inside of the Carol Hockman robe is like, you know, kind of like a little Vaseline cocoon, but yeah, I put that on. Sometimes I sleep with that on just because I find it comfortable, but by the time I go to get in bed, it's all sunk into my skin. And the following morning, my skin is like super soft. So yeah, try that out. Just do it, you know, I don't know, a few nights a week in a row. See if you see a difference. If not, then, you know, don't do that. Go back to your usual moisturizing routine. Anyways, y'all, I hope you had a great time with me today running around per usual. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.